Now, look, this is a, a mega poll, we're told. It's not the usual 1,000 people. It's 18,000 people being questioned about how they're going to vote across a whole variety of constituencies. Do you trust this sort of poll? Because, you know, a lot of people are saying that the vote for Labour is kind of a, we're fed up with the Tories, rather than a really strong feeling of support for Keir Starmer's Labour Party. So do you trust that this is the sort of outcome you'll see come the next election? I think it's a good indication and obviously it's good news for the Labour Party. But do bear in mind, uh, after a long time in politics, you learn that the public matters is when people get into that little polling booth with their pencils and they can all help to be let loose when they get in there. So there's no guarantees and uh, it's important the Labour Party recognise that. The Labour Party's got to do is keep doing basically what it's doing, taking a pretty hard line view on getting the politics and the economic right, but whoever takes over at the next election for me is going to be very, very difficult. Um, um, Lord Tony, can I just ask a favour? Um, could you possibly move a little bit closer to your microphone? Because it's, the sound I is can. cutting out a tiny little bit. I think it'll be a bit clearer. Right. But I think you're right. Look, I'm sorry you, about that. No, no, no. You and I have both been around far too long, <laughs> as you yeah. know. Um, and we've seen Absolutely. these sort of polls before. And again, you know, everyone remembers, you know, the hubris of that, you know, yeah, we're all right from Neil Kinnock uh, yeah. in 92, yeah. which went so horribly yeah, wrong for the party. So, again, a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of politicians would be rather wary of these sort of polls. Polls. But this is these polls. I mean, you know, we are looking at the sort of poll that you know Sir Tony Blair, or now Sir mm. Tony Blair, had. Um, key Conservatives losing their seats. The Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, who I'd happily wave goodbye to for you know happily go and campaign in that, that seat. Um, uh, Cabinet ministers Clark Shapps, Penny Morden, um, and also even Sir Ian Duncan Smith, uh, former party leader, losing their seats. Um, if that just say it were the case, let's say you've got that massive majority, bigger majority yeah. even than. Uh, than, than Boris Johnson uh, had in 2019. What would the Labour Party do with that sort of majority that they wouldn't be able to do if it was just, say, like a minority or just, you know, a few, you know, a majority of eight? It's got to be very good at keeping in touch with the electorate because they will have to do some things which are pretty tough on the economy in the early years. And that's always difficult because people say, we've got a big majority, why can't you do this now? The answer is that because the economics don't add up, you can't really do it. The Tories do seem to have pressed the self-destruct button, but that doesn't mean that everybody will say, oh, we'll have Labour then. As you're indicating, in a way, there's still an element of doubt. And the, that has to be dealt with by the Labour Party demonstrating that it can be very hard-headed, not only about the um, economy, but also things about the health service, which is uh, some of your other commenters uh, comments have said in the past, the, it's going to take a while to get that right. And people do give you a degree of, uh, of confidence when you first get elected. Yeah, it doesn't so last, last very long, forever. though, does it? As American no. presidents learned and Tony Blair right. really took on when he became prime yeah, minister, right. with that, yeah. you've got 100 days, you've got the goodwill, yes. you've, got, you've got to get stuff through, get it started to see the benefits of it. Yes. But this is the thing. Labour arrived in power in 97 at such a different time. There was much enthusiasm for Tony Blair after years and years of yeah. Conservative government, you know, under Thatcher and under Major. Blair comes in, and again, people forget, you know, it, actually, you know, the Tory vote has slightly gone up, but it was how the votes were distributed. So half the country were thrilled, yeah. half the country were not thrilled. There wasn't a massive, it wasn't just the whole country went, yay, Tony Blair. But he came in yeah. at a time when the economy uh, was on an upswing, was in boom, there was loads yes. of money, there was still all that money left over from, uh, uh, you know, the North oil um you know things were looking good we were told oh, at the end of this end of boom and bust for goodness sake money was there to be spent on schools on hospitals on on everything else yeah. very different for Keir Starmer entering government if he does this autumn um there isn't any money there is less than no money we're in massive debt yeah. a lot of the things that people will be voting Labour for were to sort out schools sort out education sort out this sort out that there won't be the money to do it so what is Labour going to do about that? Well, listen, I, well, you're making a very important point. But one of the things which I think, and I do think the leadership of the Labour Party is aware of this, uh, it is you, you, can't, you can't spend masses of money at first because of the state of the country. That is true. What you can do is start reforming the way things work in such a way that you build up the structure to make changes that are necessary. 
I mean, often people hear people saying, oh, well, when you're elected, can you do this? And can you do this with spending money? The answer is probably going to have to be not really or not now, one of those two. Uh, what you can do is that we can make the sort of changes that are necessary. The health service is a classic example. You need to think about how we run it, how we organise it. Given the new technologies available, can we, over a period of time, make it much more effective? Similarly, I have to say, with other areas, the one that always troubles me a bit is the is the ch uh, children care for children when parents need to get back to work and so on, and that needs to be organised. There was a, a, a good system for child care in the country, or there is now anyway, uh, and we need to get back to that. That's an organisational problem as well as a money problem. Uh, obviously, the money will be. Can, can, can I just say though? I've, I've lost track of the number of times that I've been told, oh, we're going to reform this, reform that, whether it's the NHS, this system, yeah, that yeah. system. I mean, again, it's like, it's like governments coming in saying, oh, we're going to deal with bureaucratic waste and the red tape. I mean, voters, frankly, I don't think they're going to believe any of this nonsense anymore. And the Labour voters, particularly on major public services, they're the ones who don't yeah. want reform. They're the ones who believe, you know, they're the ones who are still clapping for the NHS, for goodness sake. Yeah. Well, we all, frankly, we all clap the NHS, but we also all Not know. Did. I don't think most people know that it it is it can't go on quite as it is. The changes have got to be serious ones and quite well organised, particularly with the use of new technology. Yeah. So um, it you know it can be done, but it's not quick. So the the problem is, of course, people often look for quick wins, and the change of a Labour policy is to give the impression that they can do quick. Yeah. Simply to you know, persuade people to vote. And you can't do that. You have to be very hard headed about it. Yeah. I mean, again, I think a lot of it is about like having very low expectations and then not disappointing them. Uh, Lord Sully, former uh, Labour MP, as Clive said, of course, thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's